As a scientist, I am, tend to be drawn towards areas where there's very little known, and so work that you do can make a big impact. My name is Beth Stevens. I'm a neuroscientist. I'm assistant professor at Harvard Medical School and a member of the FM Kirby Neurobiology Center at Boston Children's Hospital. We're interested in the question of how the brain wires up during development and how these connections form and get sculpted during this window of early development and how this wiring might go awry in neurodevelopmental disorders and neuropsychiatric disorders such as autism or schizophrenia. So a synapse is the junction of communication between two neurons. It's how neurons talk to each other, both individually and within a circuit. So understanding how those synapses are formed and function is critical to understanding how neural circuits are functioning in the brain. Neurons generally get all the, the credit, but there's another cell type called glia that make up more than half the brain, and until recently we knew practically nothing about how, what their function was in the brain. What was mostly known about glia was their role in injury and disease. These cells are incredibly responsive to damage or injury. They can protect our brain by, for example, clearing bacteria or debris in the brain in the case of injury and disease. They're like the Pac-Man of our brain. Until about 10 years ago, almost all of the research uh, devoted to these cells was in these contexts. We discovered that there was another role for these cells in the normal healthy brain, in particular during development, we're actually born with an excess of synaptic connections. So there's an excess of synaptic connections and through this normal developmental process called pruning, a large number of these extra synapses get permanently removed or eliminated while others get strengthened and maintained. These microglial cells were in fact engulfing or eating these extra synapses. So these cells are necessary to do this and now of course we're trying to better understand how it is that they know which synapse to prune and which synapse to leave alone. A hallmark of many neurodegenerative diseases, including Alzheimer's disease, is the early loss of synaptic connections or synapses. This is true not just for Alzheimer's, but for a lot of other neurodegenerative conditions. And what's most striking about this is it's thought that the synapse loss happens years before you see signs of cognitive impairment or pathology. That means it's critical that we understand how these synapses are lost, what makes synapses vulnerable, and that's a major question my lab is addressing. So recent work in the lab suggests that these normal pruning mechanisms that I've just described that are relevant to development get reactivated to, to drive or mediate this early synapse loss in the adult brain in these diseases. This is very exciting because it allows us to think about the potential that intervening with this pruning pathway could lead to new insight into therapeutics. It's an incredible honor to have this award. So the first thing that I think it's going to allow us to do is to continue to move forward into these exciting new areas of research and tackle big questions with bold approaches. It's just going to enable creativity and things that might have taken 10 more years to get going, but now we're just going to go for it. Thank you.